lectures. So uh, I'm sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can uh, see it. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, ma'am. Ma okay. Uh, so, yes, okay. So let us uh, let us begin. Uh, so today we are talking about uh, field effect transistors, and uh, term by term we will slowly get to know that uh, what do we mean by field effect and what we mean by transistors. But uh, slowly. To uh, begin with, uh, what I uh, need to tell you is that uh, whatever we have learned so far about electronics and uh, some importance of semiconductor devices, I guess you wonder about this particular fact that most of these electronic devices, uh, their beauty lies at the interfaces, right? So I guess you have uh, some basic idea about PN junction. Do you have a basic idea about uh, uh, PN junction and diode characteristics? Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. So um, uh, that's just that that much will be enough for us, uh, though I will try to uh, uh, go through those things once again to brush up your memories. So uh, when we studied PN junction for the first time, we realized that uh, when we have these interfaces in electronic circuits, something beautiful starts occurring, right? So uh, we, we know by now that there are N-type and P-type uh, semiconductors, and uh, semiconductors are usually uh, in pure form are uh, of uh, group four elements. They have valency four. But uh, if you uh, properly dope uh, these, uh, these uh, semiconductors with a very small fraction, like uh, one in uh, 10 to the power eight number of atoms or so, it's a very less fraction. But still, if you dope with some uh, group five or group three um, elements, then we get an excess amount of electrons, uh, which we call uh, donor impurity, or uh, we acquire some holes. I guess you have uh, just learned about holes in your last class, right? So um, holes are nothing but some blank spaces where an electron should have been, but it is not there. And uh, because uh, this electron uh, can switch their places continuously, they don't have their identity or commitment that much that they belong to a particular atom. So uh, as they they jump on this in empty space. The empty space, on the other hand, you can imagine is moving through the system and uh, thus the hole also moves. So that is why uh, in, in P-type semiconductors, we have excess amount of holes. And in N-type semiconductor, we have excess amount of electrons. Uh, so holes are just the blank spaces where uh, we don't have the electrons. Now, uh, if I, at this point, if just want to clarify one thing that uh, after the doping, when we have uh, these holes and electrons, our P-type and N-type semiconductors are uh, not charged. They have excess electrons, but they are not charged. They are, uh, they, they, the charge balance is completely there, right? So uh, this is something that is very naive and we know this very well, but sometimes uh, dealing with devices, we get confused. And uh, this is something to uh, remember that uh, these excess electrons are balanced because the group five atom already have uh, the protons to compensate their charges. So they have excess electrons which can move around freely, but uh, this N type does not mean negative type or they are negatively charged, right? So uh, don't uh, let that confuse you anytime. So uh, right now, both of them are perfectly balanced. Now, as we move on and create a junction, right? So we, a junction is basically when a P-type and an N-type semiconductor are brought together and fused together. So what we uh, have is, uh, that is called a PN junction. And once you have a PN junction, what starts happening is this, right? So um, as soon as you, uh, Pl uh, plunge these two faces together, uh, we have e electrons from one side rushing to the other side to meet the holes. And similarly, holes uh, rush to the other side and uh, recombine with the electrons. So this word recombination is also something that you uh, might have came across before, right? Uh, so uh, electrons and holes, they recombine very fast. And uh, then we have around the junction a region uh, which is called uh, depletion region. So here I will uh, stop for a moment and uh, though if you, may, most of you maybe you know this, but still we will brush up this part a little bit because the entire functionality of the device that we are going to discuss today is basically based on uh, this particular phenomena of depletion region formation. Okay, so if you have any doubts about depletion region formation,
information we will clarify this at uh, every every confusion at this point so what happens is uh, as we have already discussed that p type and n type semiconductors were not charged to begin with but as soon as you make them uh, uh, you make a junction uh, they start recombining with the uh, electrons on holes of the other side so the excess electrons from n type they rush to the other side because there are several holes in the p type side but now as they rush to the other side now we have uh, a charged region forming right so uh, that does what happens is these electrons go and make some charged ions sitting close to the junction similarly the holes move on the other side and make a charged positively charged region right at the junction right uh, by the side of the junction and Uh, this this entire region where we have this charged ion sittings which are uh, called uh, um, uh, acceptor ions or donor ions so these ions uh, sit there idle and this entire region is completely depleted of any free charge so depletion region the name originates from this point that this entire region gets completely depleted of Uh, any free charge there are only static ions sitting there who cannot move there are no carriers and this region is kind of like a no go for any carrier so carriers cannot enter this any further so up to this point i guess you knew and uh, the concepts i wanted to brush up but uh, here i have one question for you that uh, suppose uh, a scenario like this is occurring we have a pn uh, junction and we, a depletion region has been is getting formed so what stops the depletion region formation because the electrons were uh, very happy they were rushing to the other side and meeting the holes and the holes were also rushing to the other side so uh, why this process stops at a certain point and the rest of the conductor is not filled up with the depletion region uh, do you uh, do you have an answer for that can you think about saturation. it barrier saturation potential. saturation Satur saturation my saturation what do you mean ma'am uh, the, the, there are too many charges in that one region so they don't really have space there to... are there are too many charges that is true but that is not saturation what happens is uh, see, see see the picture once again so the electrons are rush rushing from the n type side to the p type side right but as they are rushing to the other side a negative region is forming in the p type semiconductor so this re negative region starts repelling those electrons okay similarly on the other side in the n type side the positively charged ions that are getting formed by the holes as soon as their amount gets larger and larger they start repelling the holes and thus the phenomena that started creating the depletion region it opposes itself and the system stops okay so when the amount of charges are enough so that no further carriers can pass through them the re repulsion force the coulomb repulsion is enough to stop uh, the flow the flow stops and there that is the range of how far the depletion region will go so i guess this part is clear everyone is understanding this part clearly right so that how far the depletion region will go so if if uh, if that part is cleared that uh, actually coulomb repulsion uh, stops uh, the depletion region formation what we get here once the depletion region formed is a potential barrier so what we have is a potential difference sitting at the junction we call it a barrier potential it will be discussed in detail when sir will teach you about pn junction and the physics of it in detail but Uh, to uh, know about it uh, simply you can imagine that there is kind of a uh, a battery opposing uh, the um, uh, flow like a voltage opposing a barrier potential opposing the flow uh, further flow and uh, thus there is a uh, range up to which the depletion region can only extend so at this point uh, let us uh, take uh, some uh, small steps towards the device that uh, we are going to learn through uh, uh, the reverse and forward bias of pn junction so just quickly to remind you what happens when you uh, add battery to a junction which has thus formed so we have uh, seen that how a junction forms and how the depletion region forms as soon as you add a battery to the circuit we know that if i connect the p type side with the positive side of the battery and the n type side with the negative side of the battery we have we call it a forward bias and similarly if you have uh, the p type side connected to the negative side of the battery then it's called a reverse bias so uh, what happens to the depletion region as soon as i connect a battery to the circuit this uh, battery if you see and if you just uh, relate it to it, to the previous picture you will see that this, this battery acts as if to help the carriers 
past this potential. So it is kind of a force that is uh, pushing the carriers that you can overcome the barrier, right? So this is kind of a um, uh, force uh, that helps the carriers to cross uh, the um, barrier potential that has formed around the junction. So if uh, you have learned about a voltage called cut-in voltage for dyes, right? It depends on the material that we are using. And it tells you that how much voltage, minimum voltage is required so that the current flow can start through the diode. And that is basically governed by the fact that how the depletion region will change. So Suppose I add a battery which is a of very small voltage, then what will happen to the depletion region? If it is a forward bias, then the depletion region will effectively shrink a little bit, right? It will go on shrinking and shrinking and finally at a certain value of the voltage, the force will be enough so that the carriers can freely flow through the junction again. So at that point, the current suddenly shoots up and the uh, diode characteristics that you already know, that comes into the picture. So in forward bias, the bottom line of this discussion is that the in forward bias, the depletion region shrinks, right? And similarly, in the reverse bias, the depletion region gets help uh, uh, from the battery that we have added instead of the carriers. Now the battery is supporting the barrier potential itself and thus the barrier, uh, the depletion region, it widens further. Okay, so uh, is, is this part clear that how the depletion region changes uh, with the uh, voltage that we apply across the diode with the biasing? Any questions up to this point? No, ma'am. No? Okay. So now then I have a question for you. So suppose I have a PN junction, okay, and uh, I want to know that how far this uh, depletion region will go. So our entire focus right now is on depletion region because that is the key that uh, works behind the functionality of the device that we are interested in. So uh, if I ask you that will the width of depletion region be same on both sides of the P and N type semiconductor? So it will go on this side as well and it will also go on this side, right? If I say that the width uh, on the both side, on the both side of the junction, will that be same? Will that be different? Will it depend on? What about that? Ma'am, depend on density of doping. Very good. It depends on density of doping. Why? Because the force that is acting uh, to stop uh, the um, further carrier flow that actually governed is governed by how many of the charges are sitting here, not by how wide the region is, okay? So if there are enough number of uh, positive ions or negative ions sitting on one side of the barrier, then the flow can stop. So that simply means that if you have equal amount of doping on both sides, so in P-type also you have doped one in 10 to the power eight, in n-type, you have also doped 1 in 10 to the power 8. The doping level is exactly same. Then the depletion region will also go same on the both sides. The width will be same on the both sides. Similarly, if you have a junction where you have one side very highly doped, so this plus sign on top of P, you can see, this is going to be our friend for long in this course. So P plus means highly doped uh, positively, uh, I mean highly doped uh, P-type semiconductor. N plus will mean highly doped uh, N-type semiconductor. Plus plus means more highly doped, okay? So this P plus N, if you make a junction like this, where the P-type side is much uh, highly doped than the N-type side. So say N in N-type side, for every 10 to the power eight atom, you have one impurity, but in P-type side, for every 10 to the power six atom, you have one impurity that is 100 times more than than the n type side, then what do you expect the dep about the depletion region? Because in this side, you have much more carrier present. So in a very small area of this particular um, uh, material, you will, you will have enough charges to form uh, the enough amount of Coulomb force to stop the flow. So in this case, in P type side, the width will be really small and the n type side, the width will be very large. So is this point clear? If you have any doubt here, you can ask me questions because this is important and we need to clarify this. Ma'am, can you repeat this again? The second one? The second one? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So in the, in the second case, what we have is the P type side is highly doped, right? So say we need uh, 100 ions here on this side of the depletion region, 100 uh, 
ions uh, to stop the flow. 100 ions will cause enough amount of force, enough uh, amount of Coulomb force to stop the flow. So as n-type side is less doped, we have to go much further deep inside the n-type side to find those 100 ions. But as p-type side is very highly doped, within a very small range, we will find those 100 ions and thus the flow will stop. The depletion region will not be same on both sides. Is this clear? Now? Thank you. you understand? Okay. So I guess these two points uh, are, uh, are something that we need to uh, remember for our uh, discussion that I'm, we are going to continue, that how the depletion region changes with the biasing applied across the PN junction and how the depletion region depends on the doping level of uh, the semiconductors on the both uh, on the both sides of the junction so uh, so the uh, four things to remember is forward biasing means depletion region will shrink reverse bias means depletion region will increase uh, equal doping means equal amount of depletion region and asymmetric doping means asymmetric depletion region wherever we have uh, less uh, amount of doping the width will be more more doping means width will be less Right? So this is kind of the bottom line of whatever we have discussed so far. And now gradually we can uh, take some baby steps towards the uh, device that we uh, are going to focus on today or start our discussion on today. We'll continue this discussion in uh, a couple of lectures, uh, the couple of coming lectures as well. So the device we are considering right now is junction field effect transistors, or in short, we call them JFET, J F E. Okay, junction field effect transistors and the short name is JFET. So uh, JFET, uh, we, we will discuss the structure and everything and the name of uh, why, where from this name comes. And uh, I guess you have heard about uh, BJTs, right? Bipolar junction transistors, which are a common device, which you might will learn about detail, the characteristics and everything soon. But uh, FETs are... Uh, um, uh, are the kind of a family. JFETs are the very first member of the family. Then you have MOSFETs and other devices as well. And these transistors are gradually dominating BJTs in all uh, the circuit fabrication, VLSI technology all around the world uh, because of uh, some, some uh, very uh, uh, important uh, benefits that they have. Uh, first, they are very small in size and they have very fast response. And uh, there are some other differences as well, which we'll discuss in detail once we complete the discussion about JFETs. So let us uh, start our discussion from by talking about uh, this, uh, this uh, word of field effect. Okay. So field effect is basically a uh, uh, effect or a phenomena that we observe when, um, suppose I am applying a voltage parallel to uh, the path of a particular current flow. So suppose I have a current flowing uh, in, in, on, a, on a circuit like this, on, on this track, okay? And I'm applying a voltage from uh, the other, other perpendicular sides, okay? And I am modifying some property. Some property means it could be resistance or conductance or any property in the path of the current by applying of this voltage. If I am applying a voltage perpendicular to the path of the current to change some property of the path of the current flow, then that effect is called field effect, okay? So the name uh, field effect, as it is very evident, field is a uh, potential that we are applying and its effect on the current. So that is there the name comes. So uh, in, in this particular device, uh, when we will study, we will see that the voltage uh, input that we have, that basically controls the entire response of the circuit. When you will learn in detail about BJTs, you will see the bipolar junction transistors, you will see that there the input current is the uh, parameter that is free in your hand. You can uh, change that parameter and you can see that what happens to the output current. So usually in these uh, devices, transistors, we are interested in the output current and how it gets changed uh, depending on the parameter, input parameter that we have in our hand. In case of BJTs, that input parameter is usually input current. But in case of FETs, it is the input voltage. So here, uh, this relation that we have, I output, that is the output uh, current flowing in the output circuit is a function of input voltage. Okay, And that actually is the key behind its uh, uh, faster application and also the fact that, uh, as the name suggests, uh, uh, bipolar junction transistors for BJTs. So there you have the word bipolar means there you have an effect due to minority carriers as well. 
Okay, you are uh, uh, you know the term of minority carriers, right? So in every p type there are some electrons, and in every n type there are some holes which are uh, minorities, and they always do the other thing, whatever the majorities are doing. So mm -hmm. we get an effect because of them, and mm -hmm. it, both of these currents contribute uh, when, when you see the functionalities of BJT. But in case of field effect transistors, we will see that only the majority carriers uh, matter. The minority carriers do not matter in this uh, particular function. Functionality and that also makes the device uh, very fast. So, uh, without further further ado, let us just uh, introduce you to the device that I am talking about. Uh, so, this is kind of a structure of the device that uh, we are uh, discussing today. So, um, there, there. Uh, let us go very slow here. So, uh, we I have drawn uh, two. Uh, uh, variants of uh, JFET. So there are some parts in this uh, circuit, if you in, if in this device, if you see. So there are three terminals coming out of this device. Okay, if you buy a JFET, a JFET you will see there are three terminals. Ma'am, you are not audible. Ma'am, we lost your audio. Mm -hmm. How 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 much we have uh, heard? You have heard? Just you have started that much. Two, two types of channels. That uh, this be. this particular slide, right? Yeah yeah. Yes ma'am. Okay, okay. So I'm I'm saying again. So in in uh, this particular uh, device, we have one block of a semiconductor. Say it is n-type. Okay, and in that n-type material, from both sides, we will dope a certain portions to become p-type. So an n-type channel is sandwiched between two p-type uh, materials. So this device will be called an n-channel fit. Okay, so the majority part of this particular device is an n-type material, and the portion that is be lying between these two p-types is called a channel. So from that the name comes n-channel JFET. Similarly, if we uh, consider a p-channel JFET, it will be just the reverse structure where you have a p-type block, and there will be it will be sandwiched between uh, two n-type uh, materials. Okay, that will be a p-channel FET. So uh, what uh, we will discuss here, mostly in throughout our discussion, we will talk about n-channel FETs, okay? And you can just reverse everything and you will get p-channel FETs. So you will reverse the batteries, you will reverse everything and you will get uh, a p-channel FET, okay? So uh, let us move on with the structure of the n-channel FET and how it works, okay? So uh, the construction is quite simple and the working principle is also much simpler to understand than the working principle of other transistors like BJT. So uh, here some uh, just uh, points to mention will be that uh, as uh, I said that uh, BJT or bipolar junction transistor, the bipolar name comes from uh, both the carriers contributing. This is a unipolar device. So because there are uh, no contribution from the minorities, the current is constituted only by uh, the majority carriers, thus this name unipolar device, okay? So these are like for, uh, for your Viva questions or something like that, that uh, why do we call in channel uh, of JFET uh, a, a unipolar device? Because the current is constituted only through majority carriers, okay? It is also called a voltage control device for the same reason, because we will see that how the output uh, current is dependent on the input voltage. It is also called a voltage controlled device. 
So let us talk about uh, the working in a very short way. So the working principle of JFET, I will discuss it detail in a, it, it requires a much detailed discussion, but to uh, make it very simple, it basically works kind of like a tap, okay? So suppose you have a water tap where water is coming, you have a valve and uh, it is draining inside a drain, okay? So you can control the flow of this particular water by using this uh, valve. You can, uh, you can push that and the water flow will be reduced. You can open that and the water flow will be increased. Here, what we will do is something like similar. Here, the current that flows from source to drain. So this is like kind of our output circuit. We'll draw our output circuit like this, where current will flow from source to drain. Or to be more precise, the majority carriers will flow from source to drain. And according to that, we have to decide which way the conventional current is flowing but the majority carriers will flow from source to drain. So that is the current in that circuit will be our I output, the output current that we are concerned about. How will we control that? We'll control that by applying a voltage between uh, the gate and the source terminal. Okay, we'll, uh, uh, what we will do is we uh, know by now that uh, the voltage uh, applied in a PN junction can control that uh, how far the depletion region will go, right? So we'll use the same principle here. What we will do is we'll reverse bias uh, this uh, gate to source terminal. We'll apply a voltage here such that we can increase the voltage and the depletion region will spread further into the material. Just the principle that we discussed a couple of minutes earlier. So what we will do is we'll start with a simple PN junction, not one, but we have two PN junction, one here and one here, right? And uh, there will be a certain width of the depletion region depending on the doping level of these substances, right? Now, what we will do is we'll apply a voltage here such that both these junctions become reverse bias. That means if it is an N-channel fit, then the N-type side will be connected to the positive side of the battery and the gate channel, which is a gate uh, terminal, which is a P-type, that will be connected to the negative side of the battery. Now I will tune that voltage so, uh, so that the reverse biasing increases. As the reverse biasing increases from both sides, the depletion region will spread inside the channel. Now, as we already know that depletion region is completely depleted of uh, carriers. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a zone where the, there will be no free charges. So the path through which the current can flow, that will become squeezed and squeezed further. So we can interpret this in this term that the resistance of this circuit is going to increase, isn't it? So if you are squeezing down the path through which the current can flow, the conductance or the properties of this path is going to get changed and the current that we are going to see in the output circuit is going to get changed. So this is kind of the basic principle of how a JFET works. We'll close down this gate from both sides onto the channel and we will control the flow of uh, current in the circuit from source to drain. Okay, so uh, um, uh, I guess the idea is clear, right? How, how the circuit works and how uh, this input voltage, which is the gate to source voltage, we'll call it the input voltage of the circuit, uh, can control the output current of the circuit. Okay, so this is kind of very crudely, very roughly saying the idea of how a JFET works. So I will stop at this point uh, for today and I will ask you if you have any questions up to this point. From next class, we'll start in detail talking about uh, the biasing, which way our battery should go, wh how the, uh, what is the shape of this depletion region, how this entire thing happens, and exactly what this function is, how this input and the output are dependent on each other. We'll uh, start discussing on more uh, quantitative uh, stuff from the next class, okay? So I'll stop here for today. And uh, now you can uh, ask questions if you have any uh, uh, based on the discussions that we had so far. Ma'am, can you please explain the working or the, um, you know, the usage of the yellow region once again? I think I just missed Yeah, it. the yellow, yellow region is basically the depletion region, right? So just like the PN junction diode that we have uh, discussed a couple of minutes earlier, so there we saw that the depletion region can be changed by applying a reverse voltage, right? So here yes, we already have a PN junction because inside this material, this material is an N-type material, the purple one. 
and the green yeah. one is a p type material so we have two pn junctions both uh, here one pn junction here is another pn junction so wherever yeah. you have a pn junction there i will have a depletion region by default the sim the simple phenomena of rushing into uh, the holes and uh, electrons rushing into each other and recomb recombining that yeah, will happen yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the electron recombination. Yeah, ma'am. That means the happen. yellow region hmm. signifies the depletion region. Depletion region. Yes. So now, okay. if I apply proper battery biasing through the circuit, then I can actually control how far that yellow region will go. Right. Yeah. How far the depletion region will go, and that means I can squeeze down the channel or I can open up the channel for the current flow. So this is the field okay. effect because I told now the current flowing in one direction and the voltage applied perpendicular to it. Controls the property in the path of the current, right? So the current is flowing from source to drain. The carriers are flowing from source to drain, and the voltage that is controlling is up being applied from both sides, perpendicular to the flow of the current. So that is why these devices are called field effect transistors. The effect that we just mentioned that current and uh, voltage will be perpendicular to each other, and the voltage will affect the current flow of the circuit. Okay, so we will uh, discuss further detail on this uh, in the next class, and I guess uh, if you have any further doubts, that will be clarified. Okay, the yellow region signifies the depletion region. Yes, ma'am. Many yeah. people tried to join the meeting, but they faced an error that no one was letting them in. Yeah, I understand that because actually, but the problem is that sir has some setup for which I cannot. Uh, I mean, I, I otherwise I, has, I just have to carry on admitting everyone, and I cannot teach. So I guess from next meeting onwards, I will uh, try to uh, sort this out. I will organize my own meetings, okay, so that this problem doesn't occur. Sir has not allowed everyone, I guess. So I have the recording of the meeting. I will share with you. So I guess uh, then. Uh, Uh, the people who could not uh, see the discussions they will be benefited we can further discuss in the next class this was kind of an introduction to the uh, um, what about the overall scenario so i uh, attendance that is a valid question okay so to all <laughs> to all right that is the yeah.